We are back in the word and we are picking back up. Ain't it marvelous? I recall the scripture saying, in those days, the word of God was precious and there was no open vision. Yeah, we going to pick back up on this thing. Let me tell you something. There was a prophet named Moses whom God made a God to Pharaoh. He didn't use Jay. He didn't use Joshua. He used Moses. The lawgiver wasn't a J. It was an M. It was Moses. Then we have the J. We have Joshua, whom God made a servant to Moses. He made him a minister to Moses. With this same Joshua, God told the sun to stand still. Now, this is going into how the Joshua, okay, is a type and shadow of Jesus, and he is putting an end to all of that sun worship because the prophet Muhammad came on the scene and he told us that Jesus is not God, that he's not the son of God, okay, and that he's nothing more than a messenger. Now, I was meditating all day on the sun standing still, the sun standing still. And I believe a picture of Joshua telling the sun to be still is Christians who once believed in Jesus as God being converted to Islam. Former followers of Christianity coming home to the truth of Islam. And I believe that the Father God had a discussion with Jesus and said, you know what? You got to clean up that mess down there. You got to clean up that huge mess down there. Okay. And how he cleaned up that mess is exactly what Jesus said. I will send the comforter. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. Okay. And the comforter came on the scene. And this is Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him. And he laid the foundation for this mess to be clean up. And God Almighty said, we're sending the comforter, Mohammed, peace be upon him, to straighten out this mess. Think about it. People who once was Christians, now we see Jesus as he really is. Okay, the truth is right before your eyes and you can't ignore. It. And the prophet Muhammad came on the scene and he told us he is not even to be called the son of God. Okay, because God is exalted in might and he is above having a son. And he's not God. He's nothing to be worshipped. Okay. Only Allah is exalted in might. And I'm going to pick back up. I'm going to pick back up. First off, I want to deal with how understudied men, okay, they don't have enough biblical knowledge to know that from their own Bible, God comes off as a deceiver, okay? Because remember, he said, I create good, I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And then I have a scripture coming out of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, this is going to be verse 10, coming out of chapter 4. Then said I, ah, Lord God, surely thou has greatly deceived this people. I'm going to stop right there. So Jeremiah the prophet, peace be upon him, is saying God has greatly 
deceive the people. Then we have Psalms 18, 25, and 26. With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou will show thyself upright. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou will show thyself froward. Now we know that the word froward, it actually means perverse, deceitful, false. Okay, so God will deceive anyone, okay, if he wants, he will have mercy on whom he wants. He will take the kingdom from whom he wants and give it to whom he wants. That's how the Most High is, especially after seeing the story of Ahab and Jehoshaphat and Micaiah. When God put a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets, okay? Now, I did a short today, and it's going over how 99% of people who read Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 10, they overlook, okay, the overall mission Isaiah was sent out to do. He was sent out to mislead people. He was sent out to mislead people. And if we look at Isa, it's the Arabic name for Jesus. It's I-S-A. Now we look at Isaiah. I-S-A. Okay. And Isaiah, I went over this yesterday, and Jesus, both of their names is very, very similar, okay? And Jesus is God's Isaiah. He was sent to mislead you, okay? God can only draw the hearts of the people. Now, even Jesus said this, only God can draw the hearts. If God wants to guide you, okay, he's out hiding. He can guide you, but if he wants to mislead you, okay, he's out my hill. He will deceive you. He will mislead you. God is the ultimate guidance, and without him, you are stuck out of luck, okay? You stuck like Chuck, okay? Because God, he will guide you if he wants to guide you, and if he wants to mislead you, he will mislead you, okay? Okay? Understudy men don't understand that. It's in their own Bible that God is a misleader. And he told Isaiah to mislead, to make their ears heavy, to make their hearts fat. And Jesus is God's Isaiah. I recall a story when God was like, who wants to help me? Okay. Who wants to stand with me? And the disciples said, we will stand with you in the cause of Allah. We will be your supporters. All right. So I, I got to get back to where I was at because I get excited. I get excited, especially after finding out um, that there's no more excuse making for Jesus in the Gospels. Okay. God sent him out to mislead. He sent him out to mislead. And that's why Allah tells us, you will find it in the Gospels, the Torah. Jesus came confirming the Torah and the Gospels. Because now we know the truth about the Gospels. Jesus was sent to mislead. He was sent to mislead. Now, I want to talk about this story in the book of Joshua, chapter 9, this is when Joshua, okay, Joshua, which is a, another name for Jesus, okay, Joshua was deceived. This is going to be Joshua, chapter 9, verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up 
and old shoes and clouded upon their feet and old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now, therefore, make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, peradventure ye dwell among us. And how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, we are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, from a very far country, thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sion king of Heshbon, and to O king of Bashan, which was at Ashtoreth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of the country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants. Therefore now make ye a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And these bottles of wine, which we feel, were new. And behold, they be rent. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. Now point out this, y'all. Here we have bread, okay, and here we have wine. And here we have Joshua or Jesus. Okay. Now let's keep going. Verse 14. And the men took of their victuals. And acts not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. This scripture right here is pointing out how Joshua and his men did not seek the counsel of the Most High. Am not taking counsel, okay, from the Most High, they were tricked. They were tricked because they failed to take counsel and seek the Lord. And this happens in a lot of the stories in the Bible. A lot of the times men just do what they do and they don't seek guidance. Now, I've seen how that bread and that wine can go into communion. Whom Paul pushed upon the church, okay? And that is like a deception. That is like a deception to Jesus, especially when we know that David himself would not even drink water. That three men risked their life to go and get him because he said it would be like drinking the blood of these three men. And in Islam, we don't celebrate no communion, okay? So this is a deception. And this is just part of what I'm seeing in the message, but I want to keep going. Verse 15, and Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live and the princes of the congregation swear unto them. So long story short, Joshua was deceived because he didn't seek counsel from the most high okay i love how the most high is showing us okay glimpses in the scriptures when some of the top okay leaders even made mistakes also i want to bring out um how there was sin in joshua's camp okay and this is going to be joshua Chapter 7, verse 4. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled from the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 36 men 
for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening time. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan? to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? Now, I want to pause right here, and I want to go to the book of Numbers. Chapter 23, verse 19. It reads, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. This is what it means how God is not a man. God, number one, he is not a man. And number two is he don't repent. He don't repent. And here we have scripture of Joshua, okay? The type and shadow of Jesus, peace be upon him. And he is repenting. Verse 10, and the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? So God told Joshua, get up. Get up. What you crying for? Okay. What is you crying for? Get up. Joshua was a man. He did not have the wisdom to know that one of his men was in a trespass. Okay. This is bringing out the human traits of Joshua. Okay. Now, we all know the end of the story. The man ended up uh, coming forward. His name was Achan or Achan. And... This man was found guilty with the with the wedge of gold, the silver, and the Babylonish garment. And he and his whole household was burned in the fire. But I, I just wanted to bring out the point, okay, on how there was sin in the camp. There was sin in the church, okay, that Yahshua had no knowledge of okay and that leads me back to what I was talking about earlier how God wanted the son to be still God said we got to get rid of all that son worship down there we need this son to stand still okay there's an idol in your church okay Paul Stole my church and he's using your name. Okay. He's using you as the king of this church. He's doing all these things without your knowledge, Jesus. Okay. And all this stuff right here. Okay. Is now being dealt with. And that's why Jesus said, I have many things to say unto you. Howbeit you are not able to receive them. And Jesus was speaking of a comforter who would come after him, who will lead us and guide us in all truth. OK, clean up this house is what God wants. Clean up this house. Clean up this house. Don't just move the furniture up around. This clean up this house. house. My daddy's on his way home. He's on his way home. He's on his way home. This is the Lord's song. Clean. God wants this house to be cleaned up. There's some things going on in the church, okay, that has nothing to do with the scriptures. Now, I have a story. It's a small little story. There once was a day when a certain angel approached the Most High. As the other angels were worshiping, 
covering their eyes, flying with their wings, okay, saying, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. When this certain angel stepped into his presence and he says, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I want to get my praise on as well. And the Most High says, what's up? And he says, I just wanted to tell you that you are exalted in might. The instructions you gave Isaiah to go and make the ears of the people heavy. Here, the Christians are taking it to be missionaries. And they are misleading the people blindly. And don't even know it. I just want to say that you are exalted in might. Everything submits to your will, willingly or unwillingly. And that is so true. That is so true. Here you have these Christian missionaries taking the Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. Send me and I'll go. Okay. And they going out to be missionaries and don't even know. That when God told Isaiah to go, he was telling Isaiah to go and mislead the people. And here these Christians are all over the world, Israelite camps included. They are misleading people blindly and don't even know it. Don't you realize everything submits to God's will? Now, I told you before. Isa, which is Jesus, is God's Isaiah. A lot of people don't know. Remember, he, he, he quoted this. Jesus quoted Isaiah more than any other prophet. Okay. He always quoted Isaiah. Now, I want to go to Luke chapter 4. Okay. This is after the temptation. This is going to be. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book <laughs> of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So Jesus knew his assignment. He knew he was God's Isaiah and that he was coming to make those who was blind see and those who could see blind. Okay, he knew that he was coming to mislead the people. I'm going to show you another scripture that is overlooked. This is going to be John chapter 6. All right. And I want to go to, um, there's a part in here. And yeah, let me get this in verse um. 51. Listen to this. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. 
Whoso eat of my flesh and drink of my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eat of my flesh and drink of my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. All right. Now, I want to keep going to verse 66. <laughs> From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them. Why? Because Jesus was walking in this calling. He was being God's Isaiah. He was misleading the people, okay? And when he said that, he lost an audience right there, okay? And, and Peter and the disciples, okay, they said, we ain't going nowhere. You got the words of eternal life. But that is an example of how Jesus was being God's Isaiah. Now I want to go to the famous passage. This is going to be Isaiah 53. Now I told you how God used Isaiah to mislead the people and to cause them to go astray. Now this is going to be Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Okay, that was the bait. Remember, he told the disciples, I'm going to make you fishermen of men. Okay, now that was the bait. That was the bait. Now watch this, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. See, God's plan, okay, was to mislead people. Here in the book of Isaiah, we hear about a child that's going to be called Emmanuel. He's going to be called the everlasting father. He's going to be called the mighty God. And then here in Isaiah 53, we hear about a righteous servant, okay, being chastised by God and being made an offering for sin. That was the bait. That was the bait to mislead the whole of humanity. Okay. Right there in the chapter, in the chapter, it tells you all we like sheep have gone astray. Now, I want to close it. I want to close it with something coming from the Quran, okay? And this is exactly the truth about the matter. This is the whole truth about the matter. This is going to be Quran 2856. You surely cannot guide whoever you like, O prophet, but it is Allah who guides whoever he wills. And he knows best who are fit to be guided. God will guide whomever he wants. And he will misguide whomever he wants. That's his will and that's his way. This is seen in the previous scriptures. And this is also witnessed in the Quran. Okay. Only God can draw the heart. You can't draw the heart. I can't draw the heart. There's no magic scripture for nobody. If God intends to guide them, he will guide them. But if God intends to misguide them, he will misguide them. All right. So there you have it tonight. I am done. I just finished up. And we will be going into another topic okay y'all have a good night shalom and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth